Hello, everybody. I am Kara the Mortician, and we're here to have our try to do it weekly, but it has not been weekly this year so far. Uh, chat about all things death related. So, anything you want to ask me about, uh, if you have a one of the common asked questions, I'll skip past it and just check the description of the video for some of those because I've put videos that answer all those questions that I've done before. So you can go there, you can check it out. Um, yeah, a few housekeeping items. So recently had it hit 100,000 subs. Um, and so that was kind of a big thing. And I wanted to do a little giveaway because I love giveaways. I love giving stuff. Um, and mugs are kind of my thing with the coffee and with this chat session. Hey, everybody. Um, and so I wanted to give a mug to some of my first subscribers. So I can go back and look and see who my first subscribers were, which is crazy to me. Um, so if you're watching, shoot me an email at carrie at carriethemortician.com. Yep, my email's changed. My website's changed. It'll all link together, but it's all carriethemortician.com and things now. Um, so Lori Larson, John Homa, CJM Rail Fan, Jacqueline Stevens, Games Infinity, and Terrell Jones were my first seven subs. That's crazy. So you guys clicked subscribe to my channel, the first seven people. So um, if you're watching, shoot me an email so I can send you a free mug. So hey, everybody. Um, also, speaking of mugs, uh, some of you have said, hey, when are you going to get new merchandise? When are you going to get some new stuff? And I need to kind of weed out some of my merchandise I have. I've got a stash of mugs still. Um, so mugs are, I'm going to give you guys a coupon code. So it's called mug sale is the coupon code when you check out. If you want to get a mug, I got lots of different ones over the, on my site, carrythemortician.com. But if you want to get a just give me two minutes or coffee with Carrie or something, head over, use mug sale, save a couple bucks off your mug. So I know. So let's go. Brandon says you need to have wine glasses. I do need wine glasses. Um, I also I just told someone yesterday I need beer steins. I need to have beer things for my beer with the boys segment or, you know, drinks with the embalmers or whatever we're calling it now. Um, so. I do need to branch out. I need to get a few more things in my repertoire. So things will slowly be coming soon. Um, so I'm going to dive into questions. So that first question uh, do, do, came from Ron's question that says, my question is about the incision near the collarbone for the embalming fluid. Is it typically done on the left side of the person? So the scar is not visible if the deceased is wearing off the shoulder clothing. So the left side is going to be the interior of the casket. So it's a great question because if you're doing it on the side that people walk up to, it might be more visible. However, the way the flow of the blood goes in a human, it's coming out of the heart on the right side, goes up into the head and then back down. So we are mimicking through the injection process and embalming, we're mimicking the heart and the flow of blood through the body. So we want to follow the same path. We want to go through the arteries the way blood would, not reverse. We're not salmon. We're not going upstream here. So we want to follow that same flow. So we're going to, same thing. We're going to go down this way. We're going to go up this way. We want to just hit all the places. We do go on this side though. However, if we have some blockage in the head or something, we're going to go on this side as well. So we want to try and mimic that same flow that you go through the body. Um, if you do both sides, sometimes people will do a restricted cervical. That is where you open both sides, not that big, um, both sides of the neck so that we can control what goes into the head. Because if you shoot down into the body, it's still going to cycle up through the head a bit, but you may get distribution where you don't want it. So if you short fuse it by opening this side, when it gets up to this side, it can't go up into the head. So you really control what's going into the face and into the head through injection. 
Dream. You keep asking, why would the leg on a cadaver be bright red? So a cadaver is a donated body to medical science. So are you asking on a deceased or on a cadaver? I like to use terms that are correct here because it's all about educating. So um, what is, and is it just the leg? I'm, I'm guessing you're asking about a deceased that you've seen that has been dead and they had a leg that was bright red. So give me more about the situation so I can try to give you the answer. My daughter had an autopsy for drug overdose. Would they have opened her brain? It just depends. Um, an autopsy is not just making the Y incision and open the cranium. You can do an external autopsy. An autopsy is just investigation of the body to find out cause of death or method of death. It doesn't mean that they're doing an incision at all. Um, so it just depends. They might adjust on toxicology, which means they draw the blood, they take a few tissue samples and then test them to see levels of everything in the body when the person died. Um, so it just depends. Let's go, Brandon. Thank you. Um, we're doing good so far. The leg was red, the skin, nothing else. Just one leg was bright red. I wonder if it's chemicals. I saw it on a cadaver in class. Um, they could have been laying on that leg. Um, it could have been just, it depends if it was bright red, like, um, cherry red, or if it was like a dark pinkish purple, then it could have just been um, liver mortis where the tissue is stained from blood pooling there because that's where they were laying when they died. So it could be a few different things I would have to see to really give you a better idea what it is. So Folgers coffee, no Folgers coffee for, for me. <laughs> All right, more questions here. So this is one we've answered. Who do you get permission from to scatter cremated remains at sea? You must get permission from the owner of the property to scatter cremated remains. Does this work in the middle of the ocean? So waterways are overseen by the Coast Guard. Um, most people are not getting permission when they go out on these big waterways, like the ocean, large lakes type thing. Um, however, Technically, you're supposed to be so many miles away from shore and probably should get a permit um, or let them know that's what you're doing in case somebody pulls up and wonders what you're doing. So, um, but more than likely, if no one's around, nobody's going to see you. If I'm not there, just don't tell me about it. <laughs> My second question is about applying cosmetics. And my nose itches today. What does that mean? I know if your palm inches, like you're going to come into money. What does it mean when your nose itches? I was watching an episode of the Golden Girls where Blanche was about to go into surgery. She applied makeup to her face and said she had been to funerals where the deceased didn't look like clowns. So she wanted to make sure this did not happen to her if she didn't survive the operation. Is it a is it possible for someone to apply their makeup prior to death and for it to remain in their face during preparation, like setting the features? More than likely, no. I mean, we bathe the person. If they were just going to go for an immediate viewing, no embalming possibly um, could be okay. But your body absorbs makeup. Even the mortuary makeup that we apply, it's like it's absorbed or it disappears over time. It's Great. Just like normal makeup, it wears off. Um, how it happens with deceased is kind of questionable because we're not sweating like normal. Um, nothing's going against it. We're not like scratching our face, touching our face, things like that. So it is a little different, um, but it does kind of go away and you do have to reapply the makeup. So it would be an interesting experiment to like have somebody do that and then see by the time you got to the presentation of the deceased, if their cosmetics were still in place, if we tried to do that. So I think, oh, Kathleen, someone wants to kiss, kiss me. <laughs> That's what an itchy nose means or someone coming to visit. Time for wine. Someone is coming. I wonder what it I like all these hypotheses, though. 
Is the trocar inserted in more than one spot in the abdominal area, or is it inserted once and pivoted around to saturate the entire cavity? So you want to make as least amount of incisions or entries into the body as possible. The more holes, the more risk of leaking or things coming back out. So if we can make just one incision here, one puncture into the abdomen, that's ideal. So, and I, I've heard of people who aspirate through the neck incision, but it doesn't always reach all the way down on the abdomen. And then you're also pulling fecal matter back up and out. So that doesn't make sense to me, but I have heard of people doing this. Um, so you want to make one entry point. However, if a deceased is of a certain size, I mean, the choker is so long. So if you look at the deceased and you have neck to groin and the depth of the person, that trocar may not reach all the way up to where you need to. So you can do an entry point that's higher than normal. So normal would be two inches over and two inches up from the belly button. As long as you can reach everywhere with that one entry point, you're good. Sometimes though, you may have to do a higher entry point and a lower entry point to reach everywhere within the abdomen. Nitchy knows means you live in Michigan. Ding, ding. Oh. Can you have a photo of how you like your makeup sent to the funeral home? Oh, of course, Nan. Yes, we prefer if you send us a photo of natural looks, hairdo, let us know if nails, you know, if they painted their nails, if they didn't paint their nails. Yes. What are your thoughts on drive through viewings? Watched a YouTube of one offering the service of Michigan. Yeah, there was a YouTube video of that place. I have tried to talk to them and no responses multiple times over the years. Um, and I don't even know if they still do it or if they're even still in business. During COVID, it became kind of commonplace to do drive through viewings where in the front, like Portico, they would have the deceased outside dependent on the weather and you could drive through and view, or they would place the deceased in a window or in right inside the front doors if they were glass. So you could walk up and then leave. They did all sorts of different things came up during that time to try to accommodate families, but also go along with the laws of so many people, distance, safety, all these things. So a lot of funeral homes came up with some, you know, kind of ingenious little ways that they could accommodate without breaking rules. Have you ever prepared a person for their last journey and it really affected you where you thought of another career? No, not even a little bit, honestly. <laughs> An itchy nose means you're going to kiss a fool. <laughs> my mom always said, I was allowed to do my mom's makeup and hair. So comforting. Yeah, there's, and you, that is an option. You know, if you have a hairdresser, if you're a hairdresser, if you want to do your loved one's hair and makeup, you can. However, do not be offended if the funeral home is going to assist you with a cosmetics. How someone wore their makeup when they're outside walking around and stuff is very different than under the specific lights with the coloring that people have when they're dead and with how they're going to look when their eyes are closed. You're not going to do a like, can you see my eyes are, I've got, you know, eye makeup on so that when my eyes are open, they make my eyes look brighter. You're not open in your eyes when you're dead. And so I wouldn't want this much makeup on my eyes when I was dead laying there because I'm going to look super done up that way. And that's not how I would want to be. So you're doing the makeup very differently. Um, there's people who wear a lot of bright eyeshadow, but it's not going to look the same when their eyelids are closed and they're laying there. So it does make a difference. Love the cap. Thank you. I got this last year and I do. I love this. Hi, Carrie. When my mom died from cancer, she lost a lot of weight, but at her viewing, she was swelled up. Why is that? Um, the injection process repoofs the tissue a bit, to lack of better words. Um, sometimes it's too much, sometimes it's less, or they could have used tissue filler to add weight back on, especially if they were super emaciated. 
sometimes the care team can do too much. Um, or if you've been looking at that person so emaciated for so long, it can be startling to you, but guests that are coming that haven't seen them in a while, it's going to look natural to them. So it's definitely different views of the person when you've seen them that way for a while. And if someone hasn't seen them in that end stage. Is it difficult to mix cremated remains? I want my cremated remains to be commingled with my husband's. Nope. You just put them in one container together. Yes, let's go, Brandon. Um, you can, he's been, or he or she has been to funerals where the makeup is very bright and not like them at all. And that as well can happen where there's too much makeup. Sometimes that's necessary. If you truly did no makeup on the person, a lot of times it's a monotone look. Lips are not pink. They're very neutraled out and the person looks blah and not like themselves. So we try and give a little color just so they look a little more lifelike. Yep. And I know there's all the argument, like, why would you even do that? Who needs them to look lifelike? We know where they're dead. But that's the purpose of having the viewing. You want a peaceful memory of the person in the end. I heard the skin of a dead person doesn't necessarily accept makeup like a person's skin that's alive. Yes, so there's no heat to it. Products for the living are created at a certain temperature point, just like shave cream. The shave cream does not work the same way on a deceased, even though a lot of embalmers use it. You just need a lubrication between the shaving and the tissue so that you're, you're not tearing up that skin but shave cream is not going to foam and react as much as it does on a living person of warm temperature. So um, there's a lot of things that they do definitely react differently because of that. What is a part of the general embalming process that you don't like? I struggle with forming the mouth with cotton. Um, what part don't I like? I don't like cleaning under nails. It's gross <laughs> under there. What gets under there? I don't know how things get so dirty sometimes, especially when someone's just been laying, you know, in the hospital and stuff. But um, yeah, I don't know if the normal process, there's much that I don't love. Undressing a person, taking off dirty incontinence pads, you know, things like that. They're not like the best things in the world, but they're just part of it. And I guess I don't really think about it because you just do it. Um, yeah, I, I really don't love suturing heads when someone has been autopsied. It is a weird angle. And even sitting, a lot of embalmers will sit on a stool while they're suturing the head. So it, you're more level and you don't have to bend over at a weird angle. I don't like sitting and suturing towards my face like that. So I would rather stand and bend, but I still, it's still just a weird angle. It's a hard area to get to. I just, it's not a thing I love to do. So that's probably, um, probably <laughs> what it would be. I am Jewish and will be buried right away, but I'm still fascinated by your process. Rochelle, thank you. Um, and I think, you know, a small, it's a small port of, part of what we do when caring for a deceased, the embalming process. Um, you know, it's meeting with the family and going through all of that side of things, making all the phone calls. There's so much more to my job than taking care of the deceased. That I think is a fascinating part for everybody, but it's such a small portion of truly what I do. Gutter gel. Yes. Yeah, so that is why I say shampoo works just as well for shaving someone. So I'll use shampoo or conditioner. Um, heck, when I shave in the shower, sometimes my legs, I will just use conditioner or shampoo or something for lack of, you know, shave cream or whatever, because you're just trying to get that lubrication between the, the razor and the tissue. Um, yeah, too much TMI, but it's, it, they work. You just need that lubrication. Um, when I went to see my wife in the hospital on her end of life day, the only day I was allowed to see her, they had her head up a little and her jar was down and open. Yes, Vince. Um, that is the natural way 
If we relax, our mouth goes open and our eyes are partially opened. Closing our eyes and closing our mouth are a muscle reaction that we have to engage. So it is very normal that mouth a mouth is open, which is why you'll see sometimes they'll roll up maybe a little washcloth or something in place below between the chin and here just to help hold that mouth closed to keep someone's mouth from maybe drying out, um, it you know, in those final hours and such. But mouth open, that is the norm. If someone has cancer or is sick with no hair, does the family buy a wig for the viewing? So I will say that it's maybe half and half. Um, if the person hasn't had hair for a while and they've been going through cancer, then and they haven't worn wigs, why put one on in the end? Um, a lot of times they just embrace how they were those last few months or the last years. They'll maybe put on a little beanie if they wore one, a bow, something, whatever they usually wore, that's how they will um, have them buried or cremated. If they do have a wig on them, it depends. Sometimes just like eyeglasses, they may take them off to donate to someone else who can use them and not bury them with it. It's, it's all situational. Is the head super light without the brain? Yes, definitely feels different. So definitely, um, the brain is pretty weighty. Do you have a favorite celebrity grave site? My favorite would be the grave of Martin Luther King Jr. It was so beautiful to see in person. I don't. Um, I think the only, I don't usually seek out celebrity graves. I do for you guys if I'm somewhere and um, I know there's somebody I'll take, you know, go to those graves and, and take pictures and share those. I think the only grave I'm, I really regret I didn't have time to go see was Jim Morrison's grave when I was in Paris. We were there for such a short duration the day we were there. We didn't have time to go do stuff. We like just did a short tour saw the Eiffel Tower and had to go back to um, London that same day. So I wish I would have been able to go see his grave when I was there. Does the weight of a body change after being embalmed? No. Do bodies weigh more dead than they did alive? No. There's no change. The grid system in cemeteries. A cemetery near me has graves that are positioned from east to west in one section and from north to south in another. Is it typical to have two different configurations on the same property? No, there is just no rhyme or reason. Some cemeteries are all Wampus like that where they go all over the place. And there is no rhyme or reason. Um, most cemeteries are one directional if they're, you know, kind of one big plot. However, when you get into where they've added sections, they may change direction because of that. Um, but most are one directional. Holly, can a family member be present at the embalming? Not by law. Sometimes they will allow it, but no, typically not. Hey, Holly Hendricks. Glad you caught alive. Thank you. Ooh, was there a funeral that was so positive, maybe even enjoyable that stands out? Really, you know, oh, I love this question. I have witnessed some really amazing funerals and, you know, I don't always get caught up in the funeral because sometimes they're, they are kind of the same, a lot of the same, um, readings, a lot of the same things, but there are some that just are on point for being a funeral. The pastor says a very impactful, powerful things. Some of the stories that are shared are right on point. They don't drone on and on. Some of the music's played is perfect. Um, we had a funeral for a boy. He, I think he was 12 and it was at the school and it was just a great funeral to witness and be a part of because of the community outpouring, because of some of what we did during the funeral and they did, the stories that were shared. It was just really great. The family um, got involved and worked together so well for it. And it was just a great funeral. That one pops out to me um, as, as good content funeral. Just had a funeral also um, 
was it about six months ago, maybe? And it was right before Thanksgiving, I want to say. Yes, it was right before Thanksgiving. And I knew just a member of the family. And so I listened a little more closely, but the stories that were shared were great. I didn't know him, but I was laughing. I was engaged. I was listening. I wanted to hear more. It was a great funeral. And so, and I don't tell families that all the time that afterwards, like that was a great funeral. Um, But I do if I really feel it, because sometimes even after hearing hundreds of funerals, sometimes you just do get moved, not, I don't know, moved and touched and you laugh with them, you cry with them, you feel like you knew the person. And um, that's always a great thing. It's a great day. Um, Mary is asking a question. I don't have an answer. So my father was a big abuser. He said, if I didn't honor all his wishes, he'd haunt me. He's been haunting me and my dreams. Is it possible for people to haunt you or am I crazy? Mary, some of it might just be his abuse going on with you that you're still fearful of him over these years because of what he put in you when he was alive. Um, I don't know that you can haunt someone's dreams. I don't know. Um, I, I, I wouldn't feel like you could, but I would say it was more the mental that he put into you while he was living that is still just there and dredged up and keeps coming back. But only you know that, um, unfortunately, I'm sorry that that situation is happening, happening to you. Do you have thoughts on the funerals that pose and display the deceased as if they were living? Um, I've talked about this almost every week of my life, but I'm going to have a video on it coming up. How did you get your job and what would you do if a friend came through? I've I've buried many people I've known. Um, I started working in the funeral home in high school, so I've been around the business a long time. Okay, let me see. I think people are curious to learn about death care. Where's the question? And I worked at a, I need to read these questions ahead. Um, those are long ones. So I'm going to read those next time. I'll shorten them down so I can see. Um, what else we got going? I've been working on, I did a bunch of two minutes the other day. Going to have two minute videos on using milk during embalming coming up. Huge controversy within the embalming field. Um, got how to lock a casket. Um, what else we got? Cutting clothing, state burials. Um, next to cans. Am I scared of the dark when I'm at the funeral home? Um, hanging coffins in Sagata. So lots of good two minutes coming up. I've been editing and doing in the last week. So those are super fun. Um, next week, going to be doing uh, filming of putting cremated remains in those glass, like an orb kind of thing. Um, so going to be doing a video on that. So that'll be coming here soon too. So when my mom died recently, I asked the funeral director if she had been embalmed and they told me that she had been partially embalmed. What would they have meant by this? So partial embalming is not a defined term, essentially. I did a video on this. It can mean um, doing some external application of some preservatives. It can mean just injecting the initial embalming fluid, but not aspirating. It could mean just injecting and embalming the head and hands, like the viewable areas. Um, so it could have all different meanings. It just depends on the person that's saying it, you know. So um, each funeral home could have their own version of a partial embalming. I'm going to say, or they might have just been aspirated with the trocar. So all these different variations of what partial embalming might be. Embalm or decomposition begins really fast in the gut, down in the bacteria in the gut, and it starts breaking down everything. So if I was going to do a partial embalming, I would say that's going to be the most effective area to quickly preserve is to aspirate and put some fluid and chemicals into the abdomen to stop that part 
of the decomposition if I just had to wait a day or two before, um, you know, for a viewing or for somebody to come into town or whatever the situation. I feel like that would be more effective than just embalming the head and the hands because you still are going to be decomposing in the abdomen. So I feel like that if you're going for the preservation, doing abdominal work is going to be more effective than doing the face or the hands, truly. Um, yeah. Hi, Carrie. How are you? Sorry about your mom. Eileen. Um, oh, you're telling another person sorry about their mom. Um, there's a guy on TikTok that does paintings with your loved ones, cremated remains. I haven't seen that yet. No one sent me that. Um, no one has sent me that one. I'll have to go find it. Hello, east side of Casey in Detroit. So I will do maybe one or two last quick questions for you guys. I've been getting a lot of emails, people asking if I speak to groups or things. Obviously, some of it's on Zoom, but yes, I have... Um, you can get me on the schedule to speak to historic groups, to library groups, to cemetery groups, to all sorts of things I've spoke to um, for speaking. So if you have an organization and that's what you want, yes, reach out to me, carry at carrythemortician.com, and we can communicate about it and set something up. Has there ever been a time when leaking happens while the viewing? Definitely. Nature will win eventually. Um, we try to combat it with what we do, but sometimes people do leak or purge. Can you explain water cremation? Um, yes. Yeah, so alkaline hydrolysis is you have a machine. It's a tube. The person is put in a basket, nothing on them, placed in the machine. Um, the water kind of the, there's motion in the water and it warms. It does not boil. The machine actually shuts off before it would boil. So you're not boiling the person in this tube of water. Um, you put in lye chemicals and over a period of about seven hours, the body is broken down uh, into the basic elements, just like with a flame cremation into the basic elements, though all those bones are taken out, they have to be dried first, and then they're cremulated down. And so the end result is cremated remains like with flame cremation. The term cremation is breaking down of a body by a flame. However, laws in states where alkaline hydrolysis is becoming legal are writing it in as being a cremation process. So there's a lot of people within the industry, within the funeral industry, that argue that it is cremation when you're using that water um, base. But it is easier, I think, for the consumer to understand flame cremation, water cremation. The end result is a cremated remains that is returned to the family. That is it in a nutshell. I have several videos about it, so you can dive in. Yes, MP Oliver. My mom was in a uh, removable body bag. We did a video. It was on Mother's Day last year. We recorded that, which is crazy that it was last year at this time. So, all right, I'm going to sign off this little shorter one this week. If you have questions you want answered that you don't find in a video, um, you know, if you have a topic like, can I be buried with my pet? Type it in on my channel and see if something pops up because you may find your answer. Um, or send me an email. I will print. See what I do? I just print the questions and then I have my pile of questions that people have sent me and I will answer them in video format. So thanks everyone. Have a great weekend. I forget it's even Friday. Ah! Um, check out the, I did a beer with the boys yesterday or beer with the embalmers while we have a conversation. We talked about movies and TV shows that are funeral theme or funeral related and chatted about that. So go check that video out from yesterday. Um, so many videos you could go dive into. I know it's a lot to dig through if you're trying to find answers, but just dive in. So thanks guys. And don't forget if you want a mug, check out carrythemortician.com and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.